Let's take a look at some information and charts on Litecoin for Brave New Coin. Over the past few weeks, there's been some PR stuff and fluff for LTC, MMA, NASCAR. I mean, that's not really going to move the needle for most people. Get the word out, that's fine. Uh, but I, what I really care about is the Mimble Wimble stuff, which is maybe coming eventually. And until that's out, then uh, LTC is just a test net for BTC, really. I've got some gaming stuff going on as well that we can see with the on-chain data, but again, that's not going to move the needle or has not moved the needle relative to everything else. It's still extremely correlated in a bearish direction. LTC hash rate, which is also mined with Doge. It's funny, initially Doge was sort of tacked on, merged mined with LTC, and now it's almost as if the Doge miners are saving the LTC <laughs> hash rate. Uh, but with the China news, all that kind of dropped off, along with price. Both of those happened happened together, so it's not like we can say the effect was one or the other. It was definitely both, but hash rate down pretty considerably from the highs, uh, bounced a little bit from the lows, but definitely not back to the range it was in previously. If we look at script miners with four cents per kilowatt hour, there's an, another script miner coming from Ant Miner in November. There was recently this mini Doge miner, which is clearly just cashing in on Doge hype because uh, at this ROI, it's probably going to take years to recoup the cost. I don't know what this actually costs, what this is selling at, but $2.30 a day at $0.04 cents per kilowatt hour electricity cost, it's basically probably not even break even on what most people get. We'll be generous and we'll say $0.10 cents per kilowatt hour. Now keep in mind these do mine LTC and Doge, most of it is, okay, so it's still slightly in profit at 10 cents. Um, most of the rewards are Doge at this point. If we look at the issuance, and I'll look at that in a second, but this is annual issuance and LTC in the blue in the middle is still sub 4%, basically ETH inflation rate, far below Zcash, far below VTC, Digibyte, Dash, above, uh, I don't know why I have Bitcoin Gold on here, but it's above uh, Bitcoin and Monero by at least 2x. LTC is going to have four times the total number of coins. It has four times quicker block speed. It is a adjusted clone of BTC, essentially. And if you're looking for buy and, buy and holds, and you're comparing LTC to ETH, ETH has a lot more going on for it than LTC does. So it's hard for me in, in like a vacuum when I'm comparing all these and looking at inflation, looking at the communities, the devs, you don't have to be an ETH maximalist to just realize, yeah, ETH's probably going to do better in the long term than LTC. There's just more going on there. Um, unconfirmed transactions are pretty much held to 600 or less during the peaks and then sub 200 during the troughs when activity wanes. Like I said, they have this gaming thing that uh, I don't fully understand. Lightbringer is what it's called. They may have more stuff, but Again, that's not going to move the needle. It looks like block size definitely increasing. Fees are not, which means this is scaling appropriately, unlike 2017 when both increased dramatically. Average block sizes are at all-time highs relative to any period of time, right? And fees are not at all-time highs. So that is a win from a scaling perspective, certainly. And uh, the, those increases in block sizes are very likely due to that gaming stuff that's on-chain. Here's the revenue for LTC and Doge. You can see how historically LTC was the main breadwinner until earlier this year when uh, Doge's mining rewards eclipsed LTCs dramatically and they still eclipsed LTCs. So if you're mining script coins, you're still making a considerable amount of money and hopefully you're selling because this is probably a generational top on uh, Doge, and it's unlikely you're going to recoup any of those mining costs better than you are now currently. So LTC mining rewards just under a million, whereas Doge mining rewards still at 2.6, 2.7 million. So unless that amount of buying absorbs the selling, assuming that all of these rewards are sold, then price goes down, right? That's just how this works. So even at 4% inflation with Doge, the mining rewards mean that notionally, you need a lot more to keep that market at current prices than, say, LTC. Looking at transaction counts, 
very near all-time highs in transaction counts. Again, there's a lot of like on-chain gaming stuff going on. And anytime you see spikes and and dumps really quick in transaction counts, it, there's usually a reason very specifically, not like, oh, there are a bunch of people using the Litecoin chain that day. Average transaction value is kind of all over the place as well. So not too much of a signal here. Uh, certainly more bullish than bearish, but it's hard to know when you introduce a new entity to a chain that wasn't there previously, you can't really compare these transaction counts to any time before it because this is a new normal, right? The new normal is probably around 100k transactions, but we won't really know until end of the year or 2022 if this stuff has any staying power. Um, NVT also looks better than it ever has because the chain is just different, right? It's doing more on-chain things than it ever has. So this is a bit deceptive in that it looks more bullish than it is. In a vacuum, you're saying, oh, this is an incredible buy here, right? Active addresses as well, similar to chains that add DEXs or swaps or anything like that. The, the chain is just different now. You know, you can't really compare anything previously. We need to establish a new normal. Maybe the new normal is 350,000 transactions per, or active addresses per day. Yeah, this looks bullish in a vacuum, but it's not the same chain as before. I don't want to discount this and say this isn't good for LTC. It is. It's just I think it's not as bullish as it otherwise would be if the chain hadn't had any of these changes. Changes. Chain changes. It's hard to say. Um, MVRV versus price. This is on-chain market cap movements versus market cap. MVRV in the green here. Anytime MVRV has exceeded two, as in Market cap is two times greater than on-chain movements. That has been a top. And thus far, this, that has kind of held true. Currently, MVRV is at 0.92. And it looks like historically, you know, it's gotten super low in the past. But anything below 0.7 is probably a decent buy signal. So it's got a little ways to go. If you look at the Grayscale stuff, the LTC product still has a greater than 500% premium. That isn't because people are bullish on LTC. That is because a lot of this stuff is still locked up in some six to 12 month vesting period and cannot be sold yet. Uh, when that ends, that ARB trade will close rather quickly as it did with BTC, as it did with ETH, certainly as it did with ETC. So as far as a premium is concerned on all of these products, that's probably over. This reached over 800% at one point, right? If you're going to buy LTC, just don't do it here because you're paying for someone else's ARB trade. Just buy it. If you like LTC, just buy it on spot, right? Buy it on LTC USD. Uh, Litecoin Google Trends picked up a little bit like most of crypto stuff, but never quite got to the point where they were in 2017 and over the past few weeks have basically declined to the previous lows. And if we look in the past year, you can see how that rose to significant highs, but is back down to previous levels again. So as bullish as you may be on on-chain metrics, um, this is definitely telling you retail is out for sure. If we look at the moving average multiplier, uh, the, the one year moving average multiplier, so this is the 365 MA, this is five times that. Interestingly enough, we didn't get close to 5X, the uh, one year MA. We basically hit 2.5X. This is the midline between the two before this sold off. So maybe 2.5x is the new normal for LTC highs, but in any case, it's at or below the 365 MA currently. So similar, similar to MVRV, this is looking like it's getting into the buy zone territory based on extremely long-term MAs. So keep this in mind, this could last six months to a year before it ever pulls up again. I mean, realistically, this took three years to basically get out of the buy zone and not even reach the sell zone, right? So as long as you temper your expectations, I think you can plan accordingly. LTC having was August 6th, 2019. You wouldn't really know it. You know, LTC took off with everything in late 2020 and has sold off with everything over the past few months. Death cross on the 5200. Yearly pivots here showing support at 95, basically. And then below that, it's 50. So your classic psychological supports at 150. And until this recross is bullish, that may take six months, 12 months, whatever. Um, Trend-wise, you're definitely not favored to be long here. 
tons of volume support here coming in at 100 or less and then 50 is ultimately where this will very likely hold if we get that low uh, not yet oversold on rsi not really a bullish divergence yet either and volume just kind of dropping off to nothing on coinbase so not really any bullishness on technicals there on the cloud we are far below the kijun far below the cloud this alerts me to a potential mean reversion trade setup with a tk disequilibrium here and you can look at that closer on the 12 hour where you see this edge to edge potential again has not triggered yet so first you say to yourself all right we're clearly oversold based on this right price wants to get back to the mean what does it look like on the 12 hour well we're still crossed to bearish on this tk and still below the cloud so if you want to take a long here or if i wanted to take a long what i would do is wait for any entry inside the cloud with a bullish tk cross you can also look at that on the eight hour as just a vanilla kumo breakout with price above the cloud again it hasn't even gotten close to that recently ltc btc looked like it was going to break up to some massive mean reversion attempt to 0.01 and it got smacked down extremely hard mid-may along with everything else after this multi-year falling wedge right just a massive fake out this is why it's just tough it's tough to trade alts sometimes on high 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 time frames and it's tough to trade old coins against btc so this is still bearish and just kind of you know there's it needs time now it probably needs another two years to get a signal here because it kind of canceled any of the bullish resolution that it was working on to 01 you know so this is just a giant avoid for me and ltc eth looks abysmal potential growing bullish divergence potential falling wedge but again just based on fundamentals most of the action is not happening on ltc you can say eth is a scam you can say everything that's happening on eth isn't good for crypto that's fine but you cannot deny the numbers the eyeballs the attention the people that are using eth relative to ltc lastly i'll just mention the eth btc fund and DeFi portfolio I trade for Techman Capital on Enzyme.finance, where you can send ETH to USDC into the smart contract or just watch what I'm doing. You can see AUM allocations, performance. You can see me in a bunch of DeFi stuff for this one. You can see me in and out of yield plays. You can see me trading through Compound, Paraswap, Aave. You can see the amounts, the times. You can see everything I'm doing. Same thing with uh, BTC and ETH in this fund. So that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. And happy trading.